Hey, hey, welcome or welcome back. It is as always good to see you today. It's a few minutes after six on Tuesday here in my world, and we do have a new Amber Lynn video. Um, I do have a early morning meeting at work in an hour, so I might not get this edited until lunch today. I uh, don't have my dietitian appointment today, so. Speaking of which, I do have a dietitian. So as much as I appreciate all of you commenting <laughs> on the foods that I mentioned that I may or may not eat down below in my comments, I do have a dietitian, so I promise you it's okay. <laughs> but we do have a new Amberlynn video and it is titled, Meeting My Girlfriend in Person, <laughs> Torrid Tryon Hall and 4th of July, and it's going to be a vlog. Um, we have four exclamation points for the 4th of July. And um, <laughs> already a new girlfriend. I I just can't with this girl. Mm. Anyway, let's Oh, I I let's just see something positive. I like the thumbnail with Amber Lynn and Mama Lynn out here um, enjoying the wilds of Oklahoma. So, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, if you are new here, first of all, welcome. Second of all, I do speed Amberlynn up to 1.25 speed because she does speak a little too slowly for me. So, all that being said, um, we have Amberlynn out here on some water uh, with some beautiful nature and skyline behind her here in Oklahoma. They're probably out on the 4th at like a festival or something or watching fireworks. So, let's see what we got. Hello guys, welcome to a new vlog. So I have not vlogged all day today, but it is 4th of July and we're on this like... We can hear it. Are you on a barge? Bridge, the river oh, bridge. thing, and um, people are going to start... I think we call that an overpass <laughs> here in the U.S. So, <laughs> um, but it is over water, so I guess it's an overpass bridge. So parking behind us but there's already like people parked there and then obviously like across the street but yeah hopefully it won't fall in the water doesn't seem super safe to just be parking on the side of the road there especially on a bridge over water um i don't know i mean i would imagine you could go somewhere else to park to watch the fireworks i mean granted I could just sit on my back deck and watch them because I had so many displays going on around me. But I'm sure there's a maybe a I don't know safer location. I can't swim, so I don't like being <laughs> over water like that very much. See all the cars starting to That's line pretty. up here. This is my mom's favorite holiday. Yay! Happy Fourth of July, mom. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> That's cute. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Mom, it's already. No. no. What? It goes like this. sideways. Oh. Oh, Is yeah. it recording? Yeah. Oh. I'm smoking. We're going to make a cinematographer out of you yet, Mama Lynn. We'll get there. We'll get there. I'm, I'm not very good either. So <laughs> I'm with you right there, Mama Lynn. My Delta. So stupid. <laughs> It's uh, bubble gum. And um, is this what they call a golden hour? When your face looks gold? Your face looks gold. Doesn't it? Oh, it's the lighting. Oh, and people, Hi. wait, people, so mom, people always ask our like nationality, especially yours. She does look like she might have some Native American in her. Um, maybe. So let's tell them. Apparently, I'm Portuguese. <laughs> Portuguese. And Grandma recently told us that we're also French. French. Like, yeah. in public, we'll ask what tribe she's from. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. yeah. The, the first time I ever went to Bingo. Yeah, especially being in Oklahoma, she looks like she has a lot of uh, Native American in her. They could do ancestry DNA. Because um, my mom, people can be wrong about their ancestry just because they've heard stories and they're wrong. My mom always said that we were Native American and Dutch. I don't have any Dutch. <laughs> I did ancestry DNA. On my dad's side, I'm very, very, very British. 
Now, when it comes to the Native American DNA, a lot of the DNA sites don't have samples, so they can't really test for it. But on my dad's side, I'm like, I'm like baked bread and beans British on my dad's side. You dumbass. I obviously meant baked beans and bread or toast. On my mom's side, it's a little more different. There is a little bit of like Northern Europe in there, but uh, not really any Dutch. So if they would do Ancestry.com, they could see if there's Portuguese in there. But for Native American, it's it's really hard to tell with the DNA testing because they just don't have the samples. With her. Yeah. They're like, what tribe are you from? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I get a lot of comments of people asking that. So Aww. you heard it from here, folks. We're Portuguese and French. So our outfits complement each other. Your red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Oh, they're so festive. Oh no, no, Mama Lynn, don't, don't copy Amberlynn's posing. Don't. Oh wait, that's new. <laughs> you see the thumbnail? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that was loud. Oh my gosh. This is my interpretation of Amber taking a picture. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amber's being trolled by Mamalyn. I would say that's very accurate, Mamalyn. <laughs> Freaking trains coming. Yeah. Oh, cool. The train's coming. <laughs> and now we have a train, folks. Welcome to Oklahoma. There's always a train. So there's this firework literally everywhere. So that's why people are parking on this overpass bridge here because you can just look around and just see. I don't know why so many displays started before the sun even went down. They did that here in my area too. They started before the sun went down and it's like, people can't see that shit. It's hard to see them. And there was also some going on back here, as you can see. Literally, all we have to do is just keep going in a circle. Yeah. Throw it in a circle. Well, that was close. All right, let's move on. Right underneath them, folks. Yep, making the duck lips. Look at her making those damn duck lips. Wasn't that like 2010? Amber, these people right here, these are my friends. <laughs> the ones that are doing the fireworks. Oh, yeah. They're all my friends. <laughs> are you seeing like good? Look at all that. Wow. Amber, you're explosive. We have new characters. <laughs> the city in the back. And what she said, the city in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Look how smoky the air is getting. There's so many displays. All right. We've seen the fireworks. Let's move on. Hey guys. So it is the next day. I'm currently at a thrift store. It's literally called pay less thrift store. So I'm here with my grandma and my mom. So I'm just walking down these aisles, like most random stuff. What the hell is that? <laughs> Let's buy this bird to put on a tree or something. <clears throat> I think my mom had birds similar to this, if I remember correctly, when I was a kid. 
My mom found a sweater that says I never argue. I just explained why I'm right. She's gonna get it. We're trying to carry this huge bookshelf. It's for grandma. All right, I'm gonna get an anxiety ring. I haven't done this since I was like two. Yep. Aw, it's a little snowflake. So the anxiety ring obviously is tiny. You spin it. But look, it spins like that. Isn't it cute? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mamalan does not care. I'm sure you don't mind this in here. We got the uh, bookshelf back there. Hello, you guys. So it is a different day. Um, I have a tour haul. It's been a while since I've done one. So let's do it now. So first thing is this pink dress, which I love pink, as you guys know. We Dark know. colors and pink. Literally my two favorite things ever. And this is like one of my favorite pinks. She's such a Barbie kind girl. kind of out of my comfort zone because I don't wear like... I'm not a floral girly, but I'm going to buy everything with flowers on them. Greens that are this color. But I just thought it was super cute. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a... It looks like kind of a grandma kind of a vibe. It kind of bothers me when the flowers break on those seams. And there isn't a matching like piece on the other side of the seam. That kind of bothers me a little bit. Give it a try. It has these really pretty white flowers on it. So this is something just a little bit more comfy. Is that Nightmare Before Christmas? It is Christmas? a Nightmare Before Christmas dress. So this isn't going to be like something that I wear a lot. Honestly, it's not 100% my style. But like I thought it was cute. So it's like I didn't want to pass it up. It was also on sale. So I was like, okay, on next sale. thing I got is just this black and white dress with a bunch birds. of birds on it. And then last but not least, I actually also got some like lace underwear and stuff, but. We don't need to see the undies. It's okay, girly. We'll believe you. Are you going to try these on or just hold them up for us? Y'all don't need to see that. So I got this dress. There's like lightning, stars, an eye, skulls. Some skulls. I thought that was cute. But I'm actually about to try it all on. So let's go do that. I'm probably just going to leave this thing on. All right. Like normal with these Torrid hauls, if I can, I will also have the model and the price showing the item. So, so we can see how much you spent on this Torrid haul because it's just entertaining for me. Okay. So do keep in mind that every single one of these dresses I got is a size four. But you're going to see, even though it's a size four, they're all going to fit me completely differently. And it's like, I never know what's going to work and what isn't. Because this one, I was expecting it not to fit very well. And it actually fits pretty so There she is plucking at her damn clothes again. I made a little compilation like a year and a half or so ago of Amber Lynn just plucking at her clothes. Pretty damn good if you ask me. Whereas here is the green one and it's just like so much more tight and I just don't like the way it looks. If you keep losing weight, it'll fit fine. Very much. I'm just really obsessed with the colors. Pluck, pluck, the colors pluck. are so pretty. I love this grab outfit. My... It's a pluck, pluck, boob grab, pluck, pluck, boob grab. That's the, that's the try on uh, mantra, I guess here. Beyond words. I think this is so flipping cute. Pink with like the stripes. Because when I do wear pink, I still like to add like a pop of like pop dark of color dark. to it. Because like I said, I do like darker colors. This has pockets, so <laughs> that's a plus. But the only downside if I had to choose is definitely the cut right here. I would much prefer if maybe it was just a little lower, maybe more. I need to show the boobages more. Like tucked in. Let's let's get the boob grab. We gotta get the boob grab in when she's trying on clothes. Type style. Here is the bird dress, pluck, which pluck. honestly love how it fits. And it's just super light and cooling. Oh my god, I think this is so cute. Where's the boob together. grab? Like I love mixing. There it is. There's the boob so grab. I would totally wear this together. 
Her butt doesn't look as big in this one. Sorry, that was mean. <laughs> and the one in the pink one, I think, it really was kind of out there. But this one doesn't do that. I just, like, was low-key lazy. Like, I feel like I have, like, lazier dresses versus, like, dresses where it's, like, obvious where I'm, like, trying to look good for that day. But, yeah, this is, like, super comfy. And there's pockets. Okay, guys, so there's something that I want to Tweaky. tell you about. I know. Oh, my God, here we go. For fuck's sake. Just stay single for a minute. Oh, my God. It's, like, really soon and sudden. Like, I understand that. But timelines are not a thing. And you guys know that with me. Like, you can know someone for years and years and not feel super close to them. And then know someone for, like, a couple days and instantly feel, like, a super strong connection. And I know there's a lot of people out there who relate to that. It's literally just all about energy, connection, the way someone makes you feel, who they are as a person. And, like, it's like when you know, you know type thing. And I don't want to sit here and talk about my ex or anything like that, but I knew her for almost a year and never remotely felt like this. So that's how I know, like, time. Oh my God, but you said all of these things about Valentine. You said all the same shit about her, about the, oh, she's so wonderful. We just, you know, just know each other. So it's, you've said all these same things. And I guess wifey is just way in the rear view mirror. Lines are a load of crap. There are such beautiful stories of people who like literally get married within a week of knowing each other and they stay together oh for God. 30 years plus. But then there's people who knew each other for 10 years, get married, and then they're only together for a year. It's just like, what? It just goes to show that like, it's really just not a thing. And I'm over here just trying to make like rationalizations with you guys because I feel like so many of you are going to be like. It's exactly what she's doing. She's just like, she's trying to push it as this wonderful, great thing. We have such a connection. I've known her for two whole days. So she's been broken up with Valentine for what, three weeks? It was like June 17th or something. I think she said they broke up. Oh, I gave it a month before she was meeting people and she's already got a new girlfriend then what are you doing but that's okay this is my life this is my story this True. is just i you guys i feel thoroughly so happy right now i have a girlfriend Be because you have that emotional addiction i guess to another person she's Amberlynn cannot be by herself. She can't emotionally be on her own. She has to have somebody else there to be a support system, I guess, in a way. I mean, this is all just my observation and opinion. I could be completely wrong. I'm not a psychologist. But she just, she has to have this other person. She has to feel desired. She has to have this other person in her life to support her and make her feel good about herself and it's just to feel validated she just can't not be talking to somebody or not be single she just not be single not be in a relationship yes i do and we are in a long distance relationship i want to just like share this side of me i'm not a secret and I feel special, I feel loved, I feel important, I feel like a priority. Like, those aren't feelings that I've felt for a very long time. Like, I feel- You didn't feel that way with wifey? I thought wifey was the most amazing, wonderful, most supportive person and girlfriend you've ever had in your entire fucking life. But you couldn't seem to get healthy for her and change your life. And that's probably why wifey left you. That's what I've always thought. Because it was after you said it did not get the weight loss surgery and you weren't doing anything and you'd gained like the 30 or 40 pounds back and wifey probably just got sick of it because she wanted more out of life. Genuinely seen like as a person, we will be meeting in person literally before this month is even over. Like, plane ticket bought, like 
all planned out and I am thoroughly so excited. Like in the past, like I see red flags in relationships. I have red flags. People have red flags. It's a thing. But when I would see the red flags, Nobody's I would perfect. admit like, oh, that is hardcore red flag. Or, oh, that's uh, that's triggering my BPD. Or, oh, wow, this relationship is making my mental illness actually worse. Like, I see these things. And it's like, I get so, like, delusional in relationships where it's like, I'm able to talk about these red flags and see them, whatever. But, like, I make excuses for them. With this relationship, I haven't seen a red flag. And I'm over here like, is that a red flag? That there is no red flags? See, that's just me like wanting to self-sabotage. You've known them how long? You might not see all the red flags yet. It's been no more than probably two weeks that you've been talking to this person. People can be on their absolute best behavior for that long. You're not going to notice everything in those first two weeks. pretty much because I'm not used to something that feels so like calm like a soft love and I strictly remember a couple months ago writing in my journal saying how bad I craved like a soft gentle love you were with Valentine during that time what the fuck are you talking about what do you mean a soft gentle love what does that even mean and it's something that like I haven't gotten to experience because it just seems like every relationship I've been in has just been so toxic. I'm not just blaming it on the other person. I'm also blaming it on my. You've been the toxic person in the majority of your relationships. Now, I don't know Valentine. Wifey seemed pretty even keel and pretty grounded and supportive. You've been the toxic person in these relationships from, from what we've seen in Berlin. So, I mean, what? <laughs> you were absolutely the toxic person with Becky. Destiny was probably both ways. I can't really speak to Crystal or Casey, but you were probably the toxic person in those relationships. So yeah, sure. You were in toxic relationships from your own doing because when I get into a relationship my BPD is like set off you know a lot of people suffer with that like when they're in a relationship like it's just so much therapy we know you can afford it Amberlynn we know that you said before the person you were working with last year was doing an amazing job and was really helping you but they weren't qualified to deal with borderline personality disorder so you needed to find someone else you've been in Oklahoma now for what 10 months nine months maybe and you still haven't gotten a new therapist that's licensed in Oklahoma. Granted, with, with some of these online therapy services, you don't they don't have to be physically with you. You can do the telehealth, telehealth, telehealth um, therapy. But why aren't you working on these issues? Why aren't you working on these things? Why aren't you getting a therapist that can help you with these diagnoses you have? And not only that, but with your eating disorders and your food addiction, you can't rely on Ozempic or a semaglutide of some sort as a crutch because when it, if and when it does completely stop working. Now, I already mentioned in the video before that I think she just needs to give it more time, the semaglutide, because I've read that a lot of people have similar experiences where the second and third dose sometimes don't work, but then they hit the fourth dose that's, there's, that's, that's going to be their maintenance dose and it starts working again. So if she would just give things time and not want that instant gratification, that's what Amberlynn wants. She wants instant gratification and instant results. She saw those instant results with the first dose of the semaglutide and then it slowed down and now it's not working as well. And she's like, well, oh, time to move on because she wants that instant gratification in relationships with food, with everything, with the Delta 8, and she's, it's, it's, it's very self-destructive behavior if she doesn't get that instant gratification. Sorry, that was a very long rant. Let's continue. Worse. And it's like, I can sit here and say, 
I don't know why that is, but like realistically I do because I've literally talked to a therapist about it. My BPD is absolutely triggered when, when I feel like someone's lying to me or hiding something from me or they're like whole energy shifts or when I feel like I'm going to be abandoned for like no reason. Just like so many different. Those are all good things to unpackage with a therapist. Things and it's like, I'm super like intuitive at a young age. I had to very much like pay attention to my surroundings. So as an adult, I still do that. And sometimes I hate that. Like I notice every tiny little thing and like, then my BPD gets triggered and like, blah, blah, blah. And I've actually found coping mechanisms and I'm able to be self-aware and in tune with myself. When I realized Amberlynn, like the reality versus like what you're seeing with like, what I like to say, part of my BPD brain, those two things are completely separate and different. And it took me a long time to like get to that point because like once I was diagnosed and like I understood myself, I was able to find that like rational side of me and like, I'm not perfect, I never will be. And I know neither will anybody else. And that's very much why like, I have been in these relationships where my BPD, I get triggered, then my partner gets triggered and it's just like a constant like battle between the two. And I have found that like in this current relationship, like I haven't had that. It's been what, two fucking weeks? And it's long distance. What the hell could possibly have been triggered by this point? And, and that's also why you don't see any red flags. Because it hasn't been long enough. Give it more time and you might be like, oh, whoa, hold on. <clears throat> I just... Nobody's perfect. You're never going to have <clears throat> somebody that does 100% perfect. But if you can deal with their issues and vice versa, then it can work. But Amber Lynn just makes, every time she gets into a new relationship, she makes it sound like the sun shines out of this person's ass. Like my mental health has improved since I even just started talking to her. Like it was like an instant. Because you need that mental crutch. You have to have that person in your life to lean on. I've already said this. Connection. I know a lot of people like to like, talk badly about long distance relationships but it's 2024 it's what people do there's so many different ways of meeting people and there's a lot of like successful long distance yeah apparently instagram dms is amber lynn's road since relationships that do happen and there's a lot of ones that fail as well but that goes for also people that you meet at the grocery store or at a bar or whatever it may be like there's failed relationships and successful relationships in any way that you meet Look, she can date whomever she wants. She's trying to justify it to the viewers. That's fine. But what I I don't get is why she can't take time to get to know herself better, to lean on herself, to learn how to be by herself and not have to have that other person in her life as an emotional crutch, to feel desired, to feel wanted, and to be able to be her own support system for a little bit. Now, I think having a therapist would really help with that as well, as I keep saying for her, because we know that she said it works for her and we know she can afford it. She has the means and the ability to get the help to work on these things, but she doesn't. And there are so many people out there that need a therapist and mental health help and all these things that can't afford it and don't have the means and would love to be in Amber's situation where they could be able to afford these things to get the help they need to live a more fulfilling life. So the fact that Amberlynn doesn't do this is very frustrating. Somebody is a long distance relationship something I always want to be in? No. We both thoroughly no. see each other together. Is she going to move in in a week? Is your one bedroom apartment where you're always in each other's spaces? Let's just focus on Twinkie's little cute little face back here. Hey Twinkie. For a very long time and She's genuinely really, really special to me. I cannot wait to meet her in person. Like, we're going to have so much fun together. And her name is Tommy. So, yeah, I'm really excited. I just, I have to share this with you guys. And I know, like, this is crazy and probably coming out of nowhere. It's like the universe is like, we got you, Amberlynn. We got you, Tommy. Like, you guys are about to be happy together. And, like, we really are. And it's like, we're so similar in the way that we love. And I have so oh, like strongly just 
wanted that in my life. The way that I love someone, I want to be loved in that way as well. And it's like, I finally found it because it's like, I give so much of myself, I give my all and I'm such a romantic and I'm super mushy gushy and sweet. And it's like, she's the same way. And it's like, oh my God, I'm like, ah, ugh. it's just wonderful. Anyways, I'm totally rambling. So I'm actually gonna stop that. I am gonna end this vlog. I hope that you guys did enjoy it and I'll see you guys in the next one, bye. No question of the day. I'm okay with that. Um, mm, all right. I think I did all of my ranting. I said everything I needed to say during the video. So I will not repeat my ranting. Um, but I will just say that I think... I don't... Hey, I hope Amberlynn's happy. <clears throat> I hope Tommy's happy. Um, yeah. I don't know... Um, how well this will go for either of them. Let's let's hope everything is fantabulous and ra roses and rainbows and sunshine and fuzzy bunnies. Uh, but I am not going to hold my breath. I think, um, yeah, I already told you what I think. But <sighs> this is going to be a long one. I apologize because of my ranting. <laughs> I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and sign into work. And I'll see you guys later. So until next time, be safe and take care.